Welcome to Canna Talk on In the Weeds Prohibition Talk Radio. My name's Nurse Mark, and I'm here with cannabis nurse Sherry, and we are from The Green Nurse. Yes, we are. And every month we cover health awareness topics and we bring endocannabinoid system education. As cannabis nurses, we really want you to understand how the endocannabinoid system plays a vital role in all areas of our lives and is truly the key to optimal health. So Mark, what is this month's health awareness topics? Okay, so this month, one of them, Sherry, is National Poison Prevention Month. So this is Prepare, prepare Prevent, and Protect. American Association of Poison Control Centers represents America's 55 poison centers and promotes poison safety and awareness. So they assist with poisoning emer emergencies and questions 24 mm -hmm. hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And they connect you. So if you dial the specific number, I'm going to say what it mm -hmm. is because it's important. 800-222-1222. Two, two, two. That will connect you to the Poison Control Center anywhere in the United States, close to where mm -hmm. you are. Mm -hmm. So within over 150 languages, and it includes for the hearing impaired. So what's important about this, when in doubt, check it out. You know, it, the call's free. It's private. There's medical experts, nurses, doctors, and pharmacists, mm -hmm. and other poison control specialists that are available to take your calls. So right. we're truly all about safety, you know, yeah. safe consumption. And so we're going to talk about what we're going to do. We're going to bring cannabis into the, into the subject. Absolutely. The Absolutely. Right. Because there's been a real increase in the calls to the poison control centers about cannabis ingestion of edibles. Right. Children, but listen yeah. to this edibles mm -hmm. with children. So we're going to talk about the different kids, but here's the other thing yeah. too. So just think about this. And, you know, we hear about all of this other stuff, but we want to bring an awareness to mm. other things that are in your home, you know, that for animals and, you know, young people, you know, children. So in yeah. 2020, this is an interesting statistic. Think mm -hmm. about COVID-19, right? 20% increase in calls between January and March of 2020 about chemical cleansers and dis disinfectants. And this yeah. was children five and under. Right. So when we talk about poison control, it's always about prevention. We need to keep all of these things away from children and our animals. And Mark, what are some of the things? Listen, <laughs> you know, we, we, we're, we're aware of these, but we forget, right? We don't lock those kitchen cabinets. And so you have cleaning products, professional care products. Here's one, medicines and vitamins. Mm -hmm. What else, Sherry? Here's a big one too. You know, if you think about mm -hmm. little kids, think about all the small objects, you know, those button batteries. Mm -hmm. Okay, listen to this. Mm -hmm. 2,500 kids under the age of 18 ingest these little button batteries. That's well, a lot. Yeah. Right, there's a, there's, small. A, there's a period of time when you're a toddler, when everything you, you <laughs> reference the world with your mouth, like everything you see, you have to pick it up and put it in your mouth. Like, oh, what's this? <laughs> oh. Right. Eh. Not so good. It's a battery. Not good. And then, of course, mm -hmm. we have the other substances. The one that we talk about all the time is alcohol, you know, and keeping yeah. these things locked up. And cannabis is another one. You know, it's a medicine. Cannabis it is another one. Yeah. You know, it's a medicine. Yep. It affects our body. It can be used multiple different ways. And so we mm -hmm. are all about educating on the safe use and consumption mm -hmm. of it. So mm -hmm. what's the most important thing? Listen, safety is always the most important thing. So you want to make sure that all of the products that are around have labeling that indicates what the potential is for, you know, adverse effects. We want to know these things. You want to right. keep things in a lockbox. You know, a lot of these cannabis, medical cannabis programs require you to have a lockbox in the house for all of your cannabis medications. It may yeah. seem like it's overkill, but if you have any kids in the house, you want to make sure you do this. Yeah. And you want to yeah. know instructions too. So mm -hmm. having everything instructions out of the reach of children, out of the reach of animals and also mm -hmm. educating, you know, so not only mm -hmm. is cannabis expensive, but you don't want anyone to have an experience that is mm -hmm. not optimal. You know, cannabis is very safe. It's very effective. It yes. works great. But mm -hmm. our number one priority is to keep people safe, happy, healthy, and mm -hmm. living their best lives. So Mark, can you overdose on cannabis? <laughs> oh, Sherry, you know, we get this question all the time and the answer is no. If we're talking about overdose, like we normally hear about overdose with the opioid epidemic and, you know, sadly all those people losing their lives, that, that opioid overdose, it's simply because 
the opioid receptors in the brain stem affect breathing and cardiac rate, right? So when right. people pass away from an overdose, it's because their, their breathing has been decreased down to a point that it can't sustain life anymore. And so that's mm -hmm. how that overdose works. With cannabis, there are no or very, very few receptors in the brain stem. So when you consume cannabis, as you could consume all day long, every day, as much as you could, you still wouldn't affect your breathing and your heart rate. So you're not going to die, although <laughs> you be really uncomfortable. like you're going to, and we'll get into that, won't we? So lethal overdoses of cannabis and cannabinoids just can't occur. And the other thing that's interesting too is, you know, some people are like, oh, could it damage my other organs? So basically mm -hmm. it won't, right? It won't damage your kidneys. It won't damage your liver. It won't right. even damage your brain, you know, but it can, you know, kick up your heart rate temporarily. It can pr right. provide anxiety. It can make right. you feel extra nervous. So yeah. if you have a cardiac condition that increases heart rate, mm -hmm. it can create more anxiety. It can have right. more of a negative impact. I mean, there are there are over 2 million people with cardiac conditions that use cannabis, self-reported. So that's a big slice of people who have cardiac issues who use cannabis. Right. So microdosing mm -hmm. for the win. You know, we've taken care of a ton of patients that have cardiac conditions. And when we work with them, we mm -hmm. teach them how it interacts in their body. Right. And, it, and basically, it's, it's, it's really about safety, you know, because mm -hmm. it's, it has so much benefits for all of the different organ systems when we talk about it. You know, yeah. cannabinoids work on our endocannabinoid system, which is the largest mm -hmm. neuroregulatory system in our body. Mm -hmm. It regulates all 11 organ systems, yeah. our immune system, yeah. and all of the neurotransmitters that give messages to tell our body to do something or mm -hmm. stop doing something. Mm -hmm. So how about this, Mark? Can you misuse cannabis or overconsume? Sherry, you know the answer <laughs> to that question. <laughs> Let us yeah. know. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Right. So how much is too much, Sherry? So it's different for everyone. And truly, clearly, it is dose dependent. And it's it's on. there's so many different variables mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. affect how cannabis is going to affect us and whether we're going to have a good or bad experience. Right. It includes age, sex, the disease processes that you have in your body, mm -hmm. the symptoms that you're looking to manage and to avoid, metabolism. Right pharmaceuticals, any other substances that you may be consuming, and all of the health and wellness activities. Mm -hmm. So everyone's tolerance and ability to consume cannabis below the threshold of feeling impaired is different. That's why we do what we do. Right. So the right. method of administration, what is the one that we've noticed the most, Mark? <laughs> oh, of course, Sherry. When people say I had a, I had a bad experience with cannabis, almost 99% of the time they're talking about an edible. Yeah. And it's really simple. The reason why, Sherry, you know, it's there. There are actually two real primary reasons why people have trouble with edibles. Number one, we're not very patient. So no. when you consume <laughs> cannabis in an edible form, it's going to take an hour to an hour and a half to really start to feel the effect. How many times have you heard the story? You know, I was at a party and they had some some brownies or cookies and, you know, I ate one and I didn't feel anything. So I ate another one. <laughs> and then an hour and a half later, what happens? You overconsume and you don't feel good, you know, and then you get nervous because once it goes down the hatch, <laughs> Woo! no getting it back. It right. Exactly. Why is it? What's the, so the second reason is that when you, when you ingest it, that Delta nine THC that we, that we talk about all the time, which is the intoxicating cannabinoid in cannabis gets converted, metabolized, because your body wants to get rid of it. It recognizes, hey, maybe this isn't supposed to be here. Let's make it easier for the body to get rid of it. So let's make it more water soluble. And that's what metabolization does. Well, it converts it to a completely different drug called 11-hydroxy-THC. And that's what? It's two times stronger, you know, two times it stronger leads. in the brain. Mm -hmm. And it basically, it lasts longer, you know, so it's right. not quickly metabolized out of our body, right. it, lasts, it lasts a much longer. And also the effects of consuming something orally, ingesting it, whether it be capsules, tinctures, gummies, mm -hmm. oils, you know, all of these different things is going to affect how we feel. Right. So, mm. yeah. so what does a bad reaction look like, Mark? <laughs> oh, oh, you know, a bad reaction, overconsumption, 
it looks like confusion, dry mouth, you know, the cotton mouth, concentration problems. What else, Sherry? Slower reaction times, right? Mm. To be uncoordinated, mm -hmm. dry eyes, the feeling of lethargy or extreme fatigue, mm -hmm. lightheadedness, dizziness, mm -hmm. increased heart rate, and yeah. anxi anxiety over an abrupt change of mood. So I want people to understand is don't judge the feeling, right? If you're mm -hmm. not used to feeling good, it can make you anxious. <laughs> yeah. It can also cause hallucinations, paranoia, and panic attacks. And, you know, we utilize cannabis to decrease nausea and vomiting, overconsumption because of that biphasic nature of cannabinoids overconsumption can actually cause nausea and vomiting. Mm -hmm. So these side effects can last anywhere from 20 minutes to a full day. <laughs> so basically cannabis that's higher in THC is associated with more severe, long lasting effects. And it is possible to wake up with a little cannabis hangover the yeah. following day. Yeah. So, so what do you do if you're in this mode of overconsumption, Sherry? Should you call 911? Well, it just depends upon who you are, what you're what you're looking at, you know, what your disease processes are, what your mm -hmm. symptoms are, especially if you have a cardiac condition. Right? So if you're relatively healthy without a cardiac condition and you just have anxiety and paranoia as a result of too much THC, if you call 911, you're going to get an ambulance, you're going to get yep. the police, yep. and you're going to get a first responder and the first responders what they're going to do with the first thing they're mm -hmm. going to do is to try to prevent you from freaking out. The yeah. first thing that they're going to reach for is more pharmaceuticals. Right. 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 They give you more drugs. Yeah. And these anti-anxiety agents necessarily, there's nothing magical about them. So this is why we talk about CBD. Think about it. Anti-anxiety, right. pharmaceuticals, mm -hmm. CBD, whole mm -hmm. plant. You know, you right. can use it. So these, this, that's why we talk about CBD as being our best friend. Yeah. You know, it, the calming mantra of the mm -hmm. CBD. Right. CBD so, I mean, ob obviously, the best way to avoid that is just don't overconsume. Go slow. Start low and go slow. Microdosing. And again, yeah. the CBD to help your experience, to help decrease that intoxicating effect of THC. But what are some of the other things we can do, Sherry? Well, here's the thing is, you know, if you overconsume, mm -hmm. Nine times out of 10, you're just going to have to ride it out. But there's some right. tips and tricks. And, and mm -hmm. the number one thing that Mark and I talk about all the time on our morning shows is your mindset. Right. I want you to understand that you're not going to die. No one has ever died. You, mm -hmm. you don't have receptors on the cardioreceptor sites to stop you breathing. And so the mm -hmm. mindset would be trust nurse Mark and trust Sherry. I am high as fuck and this too shall pass. So just know it will pass. Do not freak out. I am okay. I am whole mm -hmm. and healthy as I was created. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm having a reaction, but it's going to go away. And, and there's, right. there's things that you can do to make it go away. So besides yeah. CBD, what about some other self-soothing activities, Mark? Oh, you know, the stuff that we really love, Sherry, like meditation, decrease the stimulation. Like if you're in a place with bright lights and a lot going on, find a quiet space to just retreat to for a little bit. Soft music and breath work. Oh, breath yeah. work. Get grounded. How do we get back into our body? We feel it. You know, go outside. You put mm -hmm. your bare feet on the earth. It's called earthing. Go hug mm -hmm. a tree. Soft yeah. music. You know, you do all of these different things. Talk to the plants, the flowers, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Have an experience. Get back into your body and just know right. that it's going to pass. And you know what? You you might want to distract yourself. So find an activity that can, that you can focus on, like, and you know what? That's a great segue. Speaking of water, you want to hydrate. So your body's metabolizing this stuff. You want to give it all of the fluid that you can because that metabolization is your body trying to get rid of it. So mm -hmm. if you have enough hydration, enough water on board, you're going to help your kidneys flush that stuff out and, and shorten the length of time that you're going to have this experience of feeling uncomfortable and anxious. And then, you know, people have reported that black peppercorns, you know, chew on those black peppercorns because black pepper has a terpene called beta caryophylline, which is sometimes considered a minor cannabinoid almost because it has an effect on the body that we can measure. And it can mitigate, like CBD, 
it can mitigate that psychoactive effect of THC. That is why we are here to educate and empower you to make choices, healthy choices, mm -hmm. so you can have the best cannabis experience ever for whatever reason you are using this plant. Right. Well, you know, folks, thanks for joining us on our Talk segment here on In the Weeds Prohibition Talk Radio, weekly live on Wednesdays from 420 to 620 at www.facebook.com forward slash Prohibition Talk Radio.